Let's talk about Refsum disease. So this one is important to know because it has a treatment even though it is a very rare disease, about one in a million. So it's a paroxysomal disorder and it's resulting from accumulation of phytanic acid in tissues. Uh, phytanic acid is a fatty acid that's present in food and this will become important when talking about treatment. And 90% of cases there is a mutation in the Phi H gene on chromosome 10, which encodes a enzyme called phytanoyl CoA hydroxylase. This enzyme breaks down phytanic acids, so when you have this mutation, it's no longer able to break down the phytanic acid, and then it starts to accumulate in your tissues. The next most common mutation is PEC7, though it's much less common. Uh, and it's also an autosomal recessive disorder. So the symptoms typically present in adolescence. Remember, since this is a disease of accumulation, it typically does not present at birth. Um, it'll present typically after the age of 10, uh, somewhere between age 10 and 20, although it can also present uh, much later as well. There's a classic triad of vision loss, polyneuropathy, and ataxia, although other symptoms are also uh, present sometimes. So for the vision loss, that's caused by retinitis pigmentosa. Uh, the polyneuropathy, you can have numbness and tingling, and you'll see slow uh, conduction velocities on nerve conduction testing. Uh, there can also be cerebellar ataxia. You can lose some of your other senses as well, such as with sensory neural hearing loss and anosmia. There can be ichthyosis, which is a skin dryness and scaling, and it looks kind of like fish skin and there can be cardiac conduction defects as well and that becomes important because you may have cardiomyopathies and arrhythmias that need to be treated so when you suspect the disease clinically you'll have to send a serum phytanic acid level and it's usually at least 10 times normal um, a lot of times in questions they'll actually give you a serum phytanic acid level and so uh, that's why it's so important to know that this is the lab that you need to send because they'll give you the phytanic acid level and then ask you to pick the disease or treatment for it so after that you'll send a mutation analysis to see which gene is affected you don't always do a lumbar puncture but if it's done it'll show uh, cytoalbuminologic dissociation which is when the CSF protein is elevated with a normal white blood cell count. Don't let this trip you up. In other diseases such as Guillain-Barre syndrome, you can also have cytoalbuminologic dissociation. So when you see it on a exam question, don't automatically assume that it's Guillain-Barre syndrome. For treatment, You'll reduce the dietary intake of phytanic acid to less than 10 milligrams daily. Uh, phytanic acid is common in ruminating animals, such as uh, lamb or beef. So ruminating just means that they chew their cud. You'll also reduce dairy intake and try to avoid situations uh, where you're fasting or have rapid weight loss. And this is because the lipolysis will release more phytanic acid into the system. And plasmapheresis is a way to acutely reduce the phytanic acid level and it can halt the disease in its tracks, although a reversal of the symptoms is more with long-term dietary management. A cardiac evaluation is important because these patients can have cardiomyopathies and conduction defects that may require medications to treat. For prognosis, the serum phytanic acid level can be reduced to normal or near normal with diet over a long term, and then that can also improve the symptoms such as the ataxia or the neuropathy.